Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Even Stevens Ranked Podcast, a podcast for all things Even Stevens. I'm Brittany Butler. I'm Ethan Brim. And today we are talking about Season 1, Episode 13, After Hours. This episode was directed by Steve Dubin? Dubin? How do you I mean, even say that? I think it's Dubin. That's what, my, that's Dubin. what I guessed, yeah. Yeah. And written by Matt Dearborn yeah. and Todd Al... Al- how do you say this? Eli- Eliason? Yeah, it's yeah, Eliason. Eliason. Um, which is crazy. Matt Dearborn's a writer on this one, which I feel so mm-hmm. conflicted because <laughs> we love Matt, but this yeah. episode, man, I don't know what's going on with this one. Anyway, so it has a 7.6 on IMDb, which is a point higher than some of the average ratings, which yeah. is like the average is like a 7.5. It has some... It has moments. moments. Yes. Um, yeah. It's very, I think it's an extremely forgettable episode. Yes. As far, at, at least for me, like this one always kind of goes on, um, under the under, radar, under like, the radar for, in my mind. Mm-hmm. And, and I think because of that, it's made me remember it more. Cause I'm like, Oh, there's that one. <laughs> I, I always remember it's episode 13 too, for some reason. Lucky 13. Yeah. I don't know. Why. <laughs> it's at a, 8.9 on TV.com, which was a little higher than the last episode. Okay. I have this at number 53. And for my guessing game, I guess that I had it at 55. Okay. So just two off. That's pretty good. And by the way, yeah, this was the first episode that I took my notes uh, while watching it on Disney+. Plus. So that was exciting but also a little bit eh, that it happened to be this episode was what I christened Disney Plus with but yeah. you know it is what it is but yeah I was watching it with mom and she literally was like she couldn't remember it at all she remembered nothing really? about this episode and wow. she seemed like she did eventually yeah, she was yeah, like yeah. oh right but at first it was so funny she was like what the hell is this I don't remember any of this Brittany I was like oh my god it's a very forgettable episode it's just kind of like generic very generic and weird but it's so much like concept driven that i feel like it loses some of its character of like the show you know what mm. i mean like you, it doesn't feel super even stevensy some mm. some points it does but i don't know i yeah. i guessed it at 45 and then i my actual rank was 39 which is one lower than deep chocolate hmm interesting yeah, yeah it was funny my mom guessed my number correctly oh really like we were sitting there watching it and she was like mm, 53 <laughs> and it's it's 53 wow. so i was like okay mom you like inside my head like what yeah creepy but we are the same person if you've listened to that episode with us yeah. um <laughs> we're on that same wavelength before we really get into it uh want to read a message that we got. This was an Instagram message we got a while ago um, that I, you know, just figured I should probably share. It's pretty awesome. I'm not sure what this guy's name is, but his username is basically Jesus 2.0. So maybe his name is Jesus. Jesus. Maybe, Maybe. I don't know. Probably should have asked him. But yeah, so he wrote to us and said, Hello, I listened to the first four podcast episodes on Spotify after a long drive recently and found myself constantly chiming in. I haven't been this happy in a while, honestly. I thought I was the only one that had an unhealthy obsession with Even Stevens, and listening to you guys express your love for it is so healing. I'm happy I'm not the only one, lol. I constantly make references to the show, but no one seems to care. Same. When he mentions it, people will say, oh yeah, I used to watch that, or oh yeah, I kind of remember that show, and I'm just like, wow, and here I am, still watching it as if it were 2004. (laughs) He says, I watch the show religiously to this day, I have 62 episodes recorded, and still laugh as if it's the first time watching. I am in a constant search for news or anything about the show. I'm hopeful that more and more people will come back to the show and see how amazing it still is. Thank you so much for taking the initiative to discuss the show in depth. I always want to talk to people about the plot holes and other things I constantly notice, but I just can't. (laughs) Yeah, people be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like I said, I'm just as obsessed as you both and look forward to contacting you as the podcast continues. Nice. That's How long ago did you send that? This was a while back. This was like March, so... Oh, wow. You know, yeah, so long before (laughs) Disney Plus. Yeah, so Um, now he's got some... uh, all 65. Yeah. And so 
Uh, we've kept in contact a little bit uh, between then and now. And a really cool thing is that he bought a Twitty Stevens Connection t-shirt from the Redbubble shop, our Redbubble shop. And he wrote to us back in early August and said, Last night I went to a Q&A for the Peanut Butter Falcon and, well, dot, 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 and sent me a picture, a selfie of him and Shia. And he said, I had to rock the shirt. And he's wearing the Twitty Stevens Connection shirt in this selfie with Shia. That's so cool. And he said... Shia said, quote, oh man, like a slightly embarrassed childhood memory. <laughs> I can totally picture him saying it exactly like that. <laughs> Me too. I could totally see it. That's awesome. Yeah. So that was a nice message. I thought we should read and pretty cool thing that happened there yeah, with Shia. It's really cool. Our shirt met Shia. That's so cool. <laughs> a shirt that I did not create with my own hands, but a design that I but created yeah. and uploaded met Shia in person. That's cool. It's a degree of separation. Yeah. So getting back to the topic at hand here, we're getting back on topic. The Disney Plus synopsis of this episode, right. which I think this is fun now. Are you also going to read the IMDb synopsis? Yes. All right, cool. I was hoping you would. Yeah, all the INDB synopses or synopsises, whatever, they sound like they were written by 10-year-olds, so... It was probably me when I was 10 and (laughs) just got on IMDB. So the Disney Plus synopsis is, Lewis accidentally unplugs Ren's alarm clock, making her late for school. Which is the first minute of the episode. There you go. That's Uh the whole episode. Can you imagine a whole episode just on that? concept i wouldn't press play on that thing i'd be like well okay what yeah, else like, this sounds super boring <laughs> all right next all right so what's uh the disney plus that was the disney plus synopsis. Oh, that's the disney plus one yes <laughs> oh my gosh what's the imdb one <laughs> i know disney plus is that slacking was lame, man. man they should have contacted us honestly and they should have contacted us for the freaking episode order because apparently they don't know what they're doing with that or, either or contact wikipedia it's i like know there Uh, Anyway, so the IMDb synopsis is Lewis makes Ren late for school on the Friday when she's supposed to set up for her. Wait, on the Friday when she's supposed to set up her display for Lawrence Junior High's 75th anniversary. They got the day right, actually. Yeah, because it's not really obvious that it's a Friday. Yeah, you just kind of have to like observe, like deduce that it is in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And then my synopsis, it's interesting how everybody can summarize something differently. Yeah. So I said, Ren is late for school and gets detention. Now the world is ending because she's in desperate need of extra time to finish up a display for Lawrence Junior High's 75th anniversary. Yeah. So with some help from Lewis and a new pal from detention, she sneaks into school at night to get it done. Yep. Um... And that's it, guys. Basically, that's the whole episode. That's it. We don't need to recap anything. Follow us on all the socials. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, honestly, that's that's it. Are both of us have the same complaint that like nothing much happens in this episode? OK, it's a weird episode. There's no mom and dad. You're right. There's no Tani. There's no Twitter. There's no Donnie. It's Wexler and Tugnut. Yeah. But it's just Ren, Lewis, and this one-off character, Chloe. Yeah. It's a really kind of bizarre episode, if you think about it. I never even thought about that. It's just Ren and Lewis. That might be one of the reasons why it feels weird. You have it at 39, though. I have it at 53. 53 is definitely in my lower Yeah, that's a little. 39 (laughs) is like, is still to me like a good, I still like this episode. Hmm. The line between deep chocolate and after hours is kind of like another split in my list. And is deep chocolate higher or lower? Thirty. Uh, it's 38. So it's one okay, higher. Okay, so it's, okay. Yeah. Just because like deep chocolate, you know, I was laughing and stuff. And this one I'm laughing too, but it's just like there's so, there's a big chunk of it where you're watching not much happen. It's a lot of like yes. forced conflict. But it's funny though. And I love the detention scenes. I think it's my favorite part of the episode easily. I just love seeing the place where Lewis is spending most of his time. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So I, I love the detention scenes. The scene. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah, so those, would you say, was that your general thoughts? or? Yeah, that was my general thoughts. Okay, so yeah. My general, um, I just said, uh, this was my like written notes that I wrote from watching it mm-hmm. uh, yesterday. I said, I really didn't care for this one. 
It was the episode I was least looking forward to talking about from season one. It felt very slow and empty. There was a lot of dead mm. space. Yes. Like dead space where like no one's talking. Yeah. It's just like music playing as you're watching things happen. It's yeah. very weird. I said Tugnut is great. Yes. And everyone else is fine, but it just falls a little flat. Yeah, everyone has, gives really good performances. I think it's just the plot. Um, yeah. I love the idea of them breaking into the school, but at the same mm-hmm. time, I wish they had played more on Lewis versus Ren. Their pers- I don't know. They kind of do, I guess. I didn't know. Yeah. I'm trying to find something. Honestly, I think it's so funny. Like from the synopsis we gave to our conversation now, yeah. you don't need to know anything else to like really understand what we're talking about. <laughs> it's crazy. I remember when I first ranked this, did my ranking, and I came upon this episode, I was excited to watch it because there are things from it I like. And, and it's also an episode I probably was lesser familiar with, mm. maybe because it's just so generic in general, <laughs> but... And then I thought it was interesting. I went back to my review to see where I was at with when yeah. I wrote it. And mm. this was January 2017 that I posted this okay. review of this episode. When did this episode air? Uh, ooh, sometime in 2000. Does Disney Plus have the air dates or no? No, I don't think so. I wish they would. That'd be cool. They even have like the date of the series wrong. It says like 2000 to 2002. It went to 2003, yeah, did it, went it to not? 20, yeah, 2003. Because their last episode was in June of 2003, I believe, or May? May or June? Well, yeah, because the, the movie was June 2003. I remember hearing back then that they had already stopped filming like months before. So mm. I think they just probably stopped filming in 2002, and that might be why it says that. Maybe, but it's sad. It makes it look like the show only existed for two years. Yeah. Anyway, but so I went back to look at my review and I pretty much felt the same way, which I should have known because it's 53, but I'm actually surprised I didn't rank it lower than that. Really? Yeah. Um, I apparently had a lot of trouble writing this review two years ago or whatever. And I said, I don't know what it is, but it took forever to even attempt to do this blog. I remember you writing that for this episode. And I said, I've been sitting here wondering why I didn't rank this one lower but I just remembered that I really like seeing Lewis and Ren work together. Yeah, it is nice. I just wish Lewis had a bigger role in this episode and didn't mess things up. <laughs> so said, it's so it's such a like throwaway mess up too, like how he did. Yeah, he it's just like you yeah. know. And then Ren doesn't even get that upset at him for it. Yeah, it's weird. Like, the direction was kind of weird in this episode too. Yeah. And I said, there's also something I've always liked about being at school at night. Yeah. Is it just me? I said, back in the day, I used to love going to functions at my middle school at night or on the weekends. Maybe I'm just weird. I said, this is another episode that doesn't have a subplot that probably has something to do with it. I said that I had trouble tackling duck soup for the same reason. Well, I love duck soup. And I said, but yeah, it's a pretty simple episode. I feel like some people might find this one a little boring. That's a perfect comparison. So Duck Soup, I don't know where you have Duck Soup ranked. I love Duck Soup. It's one of my favorite episodes. And that doesn't have a subplot, just like this one doesn't have a subplot. But Duck Soup is like far and beyond a better episode just because there's so many different things happening. You have more characters in it and you have like more jokes. The stakes are higher. Like what's the stakes in this one? She just doesn't finish... This I know. <laughs> and especially, at, I mean, uh, we'll get to it, but at the end, it's like, it's not even that cool of like a ceremony. It's just like oh, yeah. standing five people standing in a hallway <laughs> with an old lady. <laughs> like, it's just, yeah, it's like a, but yeah, the stakes are lower in this one too. Duck soup is ranked lower than this one on my no, list. No, you're, you're just wrong. I don't know. Oh my gosh, duck soup is so good. It's, it's in my top 10, I think. I mean, I guess I probably would like Duck Soup better than this one, but I don't know. There's something I about love that episode. Duck Soup. Oh my gosh. Well, I can't wait till we get to that, though. That's pretty coming up. I mean, I'm sure it'll be fun to talk about. Most of them are fun to talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Something about that one that I just never really liked that much. Hmm. I mean, it's not like this one is ranked that much higher than it either. There's literally only two episodes in between them, so <laughs> I'm yeah. not, not going to get all torn up about it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, maybe I'd switch them. That's what I'd say, maybe. Okay. So, plot point time, I guess, even though there's not really yeah. any plot points. Like, let's just zoom the heck through let's do it. literally the first half of the episode. Okay. Because, I mean, and like, like you said earlier before yeah. we started recording, you said, yeah, even the second half of the episode doesn't have much. Yeah, just the first half at least has <laughs> the, the setup. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 
Yeah, but it's still like it all happens in a way that feels like nothing's happening. Yeah. It starts off with Lewis walking into Ren's bedroom at 1.27 a.m. asking to use her laptop. Which means he's starting something at 1.27 on a school <laughs> night. Yeah. Well, I mean, or what? The, who knows what he wants her laptop for? I mean, but on you know a school, I mean? It's a Thursday night and he has school the next morning and he's beginning the laptop endeavor at 1.27 in the morning. Like, can you imagine? You have to wake up at like 6.30 on a school day. Honestly, though, I was just like, who even knows what he's using it for? It's Louis Stevens. I'm so dying I'm not, to know what it is. I'm just like, okay, Louis is eating chocolate at 1.27 a.m., <laughs> goes into <laughs> Ren's room to use her laptop. I like that. And also, I, I love the way he's just like, hey, Ren, can I use your laptop? And she's asleep and just is like, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. and he's like, okay, great, thanks. And I'm like, yeah, that wouldn't hold up in court. Uh, I'd be like, she said yes. She, she was asleep, but she made some noises. She definitely said, consciously said yes. <laughs> I like this opening scene, though. I'm like, oh, it's awful, though. He unplugs Ren's laptop and just basically steals it. And while he unplugged the laptop, he accidentally unplugged Ren's alarm clock, too, and got chocolate everywhere as well. So, obviously, when Ren wakes up late from the sound of a lawnmower going off, she's like, oh, wait, crap. Lawnmowers don't go off at six in the morning or whatever. It must be late. Um, And so, yeah, she wakes up and sees chocolate everywhere, so she knows it must have been Lewis. More chocolate, by the way. Maybe he was eating a real good chocolate bar left Uh, over from uh, the last episode. That's funny, actually. (laughs) I didn't think about that. Yeah, maybe, you know, he had so much chocolate, not all of it melted. She said, might as well eat some of this. But see, I love this universe. Now I'm just going to imagine that that is what it is. Okay. So basically, yeah, that happens. Ren wakes up late. She's like, oh, no, I'm late for school. Got to get ready. We get like a fast motion little thing of her getting ready for school. She's like brushing her teeth with no hands. It's weird. Yes, doing her hair, all this stuff. She is about to leave the house with her slippers on and... Insert laugh track here. Yeah, honestly. And I I always... Something about the way they zoom in on her feet and she she just goes like, tink, tink, with her feet. That always bothered me. (laughs) It's very like... uh like ho- it's just kind of hokey yeah it's like you know what I mean so it was like okay now Christy move your feet up and down as we get a shot great great <laughs> fantastic but nice. it's just like it's just annoying <laughs> like yeah. they could have just it, it would have been funnier if we just like pan down and just see your feet standing there like should need to also go yeah. Dink, dink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to drive the point home that I'm still wearing slippers dink, dink. or like at least like we went back to her, cut to her face and she's like you know looks so upset like so irritated yeah. about it <laughs> So she gets to school late, and when she gets to school late, she runs into Principal Wexler, and Wexler establishes the plot out loud, and, you know, says, Ren, you know you need to have that display for Lawrence Jr. High's 75th anniversary done by Monday, or whatever it is. Like, he basically says, like, (laughs) the entire plot. Apparently, it's good for his career. I don't know. I know, I actually did like that line, right? Doesn't he say, like, people who can help with my career? Yeah, I was like, what? I know, I was like, what? can Mrs. Bushwick do with your career? <laughs> <laughs> like, she's like a 90-year-old lady. It's so oh weird. Oh, my God. This that is, like, is funny. This is also, like, the first time I think we see Ren as, like, that assistant role with Wexler. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Because later on, we see that Wexler has her own personal phone line number yeah. on his cell phone. Like his, yeah, that's kind of, that's crossing line I think maybe yes this relationship is crossing lots of lines lots of times but um while he's in a hot tub yeah while he's in a hot tub yeah it's it's all a little strange yeah um but anyway we'll get to that basically Wexler is like oh you know I'm gonna be away on a very important principal meeting while he openly has a snorkel and goggles in his little briefcase bag. Yeah. And then as soon as Ren sees it, he closes it and he's like, oh, it's a a, a very important principal meeting. I, I have to take a plane and everything. I love the way that and they, is. And they call back to it in the next scene too. It's funny. Yeah. I love the way that's just like that's enough to make it. it yeah. That makes it official. Yeah. He has to take a plane and everything. And so I think it's interesting because, you know, Ren's like, don't worry, Principal Wexler, I'll get it done. She was going into the school, and then she's like, oops, I'm late for gym. What else would she have been late for? I, no, but I'm just like, why? if you knew you were late for gym, why were you going to where gym was not taking place? Huh. Yeah, that's true. Like, she's just like, oh, I'm late for gym. It's like, you're late for school. Like, you just yeah. woke up, like, three hours late. <laughs> 
she's just worried about Jim. Like she's not even. <laughs> Hold on, I'm, like, I'm late for Jim. Uh, you're late for school. <laughs> yeah. It's noon. She's just late for everything ever. Yeah. Oh, I'm late for school. I'm late for gym. Like, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's ridiculous because um, Wexler tells Ren, she, he just lets her know that Tugnut's in charge. Oh, that's right. That's the lady. And yeah. then she's like, Tugnut? Oh my gosh, I'm late for gym. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so she runs to gym and Coach Tugnut is in charge. And she's like, uh, can I ask you why Vice Principal Mason isn't in charge? That's where it was. Yeah. And Coach Tugnut goes down this whole hierarchy of why he's in charge. Vice Principal Mason is out sick. The Dean of Students has jury duty. The guidance counselor had a nervous breakdown. And the woodshop teacher lost another thumb. So, according to the official chain of command, you're looking at the top dog. The woodshop teacher's like fourth in command. The woodshop teacher is above Coach Tugnut. Yeah. In the hierarchy ladder. And I'm just like, okay, but it's even Stevens. I'm not even going to question why that was written that way. I actually love that whole logic behind why Coach Tugnut's in charge. Though. Yeah, that was actually one one of the highlights. Yeah. I was actually, I laughed here. Only because Tugnut is really good in this episode. Oh, Jim Wise so is really good. Is Vice Principal Mason, is that, the, what was the name of the one in Model Principal? Model Principal, the Vice Principal is Landau. Landau, that's right. That's right. Mr. It Landau. was two years later though, so. Yes, exactly. They must have a pretty high turnover with Vice Principals at this school. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I, I don't blame them. Yeah, so basically, Coach Tugnut's in charge, and since Ren was late, he forces her to sit class out on this bench with this girl named Chloe, who's clearly supposed to be like an edgy troublemaker who's painting her toenails with a Crayola non toxic marker, uh, which is another thing they call back to. I know, it's weird. Yeah. And so she starts trying to have this conversation with Ren, but Ren's like, we're really not supposed to be talking. And then Coach Tugnut is like, illegal use of the mouth, you have detention. I'm like, all right. I mean, that's basically all that happens. And so Coach Tugnut tells Ren she needs to go to detention at three o'clock after school. But she's like, oh, I can't do that. I have to work on my display. Ah. And so then it just cuts to 3 p.m. And she's on her way to detention And she's walking to this detention room like she's walking to her execution. And they're using that same sort of style, uh, that thing they used for Lewis when he was walking past the scooter in the last episode. Yes. And he did that glide thing. Like, (laughs) Ren's just kind of gliding to detention. Kind of a similar way as Rengate. Yep. When, like... The hallway looks all... The hallway is, like, dingy. You know, things are all a mess and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. And I said in my notes, I said that they depict detention like this in so many shows. Yeah. There was an episode of Lizzie McGuire where she was walking to detention as if it was the gates of hell. I remember that. You know, in Andy Mack, in one of the first Andy Mack episodes, they did the same sort of thing. Did you guys have detention, like, at, at your school or junior high or anything? Uh, like yeah, but I honestly, I never really got detention, so I couldn't I couldn't tell you what it was like. I, I, don't, I don't remember. In, like, elementary school and junior high, we did not have detention. But in high school, we had it. But instead of doing detention, you can opt to just serve like 15, 20 minutes with a teacher and just help them in their classroom. Huh. That is an alternative. And that's what most people did. Yeah. I think detention was just you stayed like 20 minutes after school or something in a room. Yeah. It was like not that big of a deal. Yeah. It was really just a slap on the wrist. Ren walks into the detention room. I love this scene, by the way. I did like this bit with the freaking guy who's obviously dead. There's this old guy who's like, quote unquote, asleep at the desk, like just leaning back in his chair. And she goes to give him her detention slip. And then Chloe's like, don't bother. He's been asleep since 1985. That's code for he is dead. (laughs) Like I was actually laughing when I reread my review. Uh, I was like, is this guy a saint or something? Because there's absolutely no explanation to why he has not decomposed since 1985. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Unless that was like a gross exaggeration. What was his name again? Peters. Peters. There wasn't a credit for him on IMDb. Huh. Well, I mean, he is dead. (laughs) Just a dummy. If they're just tossing, like crumpling up and throwing their detention slips, like how do they know if you actually show up? Oh, I know. There's, there's so the, many holes. The desk is just covered with detention yeah, probably been there since the 80s. Which, again, that should give it away that yeah. something's not right. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's, like, a bunch of weirdos in the detention room. And Chloe's just trying to introduce Ren to all the weirdos. And then Lewis comes in. My people! 
<laughs> and she's like, oh, and that's, I'm like, really? Does she not know that that's Ren's little brother? Yeah, because she knows who Ren is. Yeah. She goes to introduce Louis. She's like, and that's, and like Ren cuts her off. Like, I know who that is. Yeah, everyone knows him as Ren Stevens' kid brother. Like, how would... Yeah. So Chloe's a one-off, which is weird, because they really make it seem like Louis and Chloe are, like, really good friends. Mm-hmm. Like, almost as though I'm curious if they had thought about making her, like, a recurring character or something. I kind of liked her character. Yeah, she's she, all right. She reminded me of, do you remember Trini from Boy Meets World, Brittany Murphy's character? Sounds familiar. She was, like, Topanga's best friend in, like, three episodes mm. in, high, in, like, the second season. That same kind of, like, quirky kind of like air heady character yeah very similar but yeah so lewis comes in my people clearly detention is his second home here's another thing i wish they had done with the plot i loved seeing ren in detention like those worlds collide i wish they did mm-hmm. kind of like maybe like a breakfast clubby type of thing and like had her come mm. come back a couple different times in detention and then builds a relationship with and like learns about the people in detention and yeah. I don't know. That would have been kind of a cool twist, too, I think. And so something that I noticed here. So Lewis has this scab on his chin. Yeah. For this entire episode. And I was always like, that is so weird. That's a real scab. In a week, first week. That's what I thought. When, it was, okay. when they're on the Ferris wheel, yeah. like the footage from the on the Ferris wheel, you can clearly see like a circle of yeah. like redness on Shia's chin yeah. right where that scab used to be. So I was like, okay, so the Ferris wheel quote unquote present day stuff must have been filmed soon after after hours which yeah. was number 113 in production so yeah that and it's, it's funny because that's the same thing happened with Shia and Transformers like he had an actual injury yep and they, and had, to, they like, had to like write it in write it in yeah it's funny that's funny because there's no way they could just ignore this giant no, scab pretty, on his it was chin it pretty obvious yeah what happened to your chin Oh, that's a, that's a sports injury. Please. He tripped over the remote when dad was watching football. Yeah. I like it was a nice uh, little detail though with the the remote and all that. It was Yeah, well, I love well that. Handled, <laughs> handled well. So Lewis is, you know, there, he's in detention now and then he a microphone comes falling yeah. down from the ceiling. He just he just picks it up and just says, "Let the games begin." And they all just start Converting the classroom into a hamster racing arena. Yep. Hey, I brought I brought this in too. You guys can't see it. Oh, the visor. <laughs> the oh, visor. I got, the, I got a version of, of Lewis's green visor. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. But yeah. yeah, so they're converting it into this little thing. And um, they have everything fully orchestrated. Like they totally know how to do this at a moment's notice. Flipping everything over. Flipping tables. Flipping yeah. boards to whatever. And then they're just racing hamsters. And yep. I'm just like, only on Even Stevens. I'm just like, and honestly, that's when my mom looked over to me and she said, what the hell? <laughs> I love this, though. She was so confused. She was like, pretty, what the hell? What, what is this? I don't remember any of this. Yeah, because that's definitely something you feel like you should remember. Yeah. Like hamster races in an Even Stevens episode. But then again... Lots of weird, surreal things happen. Yeah, so that's true. Gets lost in the shuffle. Yeah. And this isn't even as surreal as some other stuff. So yeah. Ren is just sitting there watching it like, what is happening? And then Lewis starts smelling French fries. Jumbo size crinkle fries. And then he realizes that that must mean it's Coach Tugnut. Mm-hmm. And Coach Tugnut comes in. This part made me laugh. This was like probably the one... Thing I really laughed at in the whole episode. So Coach Tugnut comes in. Lewis runs over to the little crank thing to yep. raise the dead guy's <laughs> arm. I love how you call him the dead guy. Well, he's the dead guy. Know, funny. So Coach Tugnut comes in. And he's just like, I trust everything is going smoothly in here. And Lewis just cranks the guy's hand up with an obvious rope. And Tugnut just says, excellent. Because <laughs> they put sunglasses on over the guy's eyes. <laughs> yep. Oh my god, but it's just so funny. Yeah. Excellent. Oh my god. There's something about Jim Wise and his delivery. I just laughed so hard. He's like, just so oblivious. Yeah, Coach Tugna is so dumb sometimes. Yeah. It's amazing. Ren tries to like show remorse for being late for school and for talking in gym to Coach Tugnut, and then a hamster starts crawling up her pant leg and she's just like, ew, 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 no, 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 no. And you know, mid apology or whatever. And so because of that. Tugnut's just like, you are way out of line, lady. You're like standing up on a desk and all this stuff, like whatever. He's like, you just got a steaming pile of double detention for just doing that? 
Serves her right. And then the weird thing, too, was that he tells everybody else to go home. Yeah, like, they're all dismissed from detention, apparently. Detention just started. Yeah, so they what they should do is get one person every day just to do that, and then they'll dismiss everyone else. And then- <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, what the heck? Like, detention just started, yeah. basically. And he just tells everyone else, go home. You just stay here by yourself, Ren, for an extra however long. Yeah. It's very weird. A lot of things that happen in this episode don't really make sense. I love this part, though. This I laughed the hardest at this part when she's like, Kevin and the lights and they're bad people. And she yeah. like, I love when she does it. She's so good in that in that scene. And they're just all sitting there like, we just raised some hamsters. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So I guess by the end of school that day, by the time she gets home, she was going to like burst into Lewis's room and yell at him. Probably just yell at him for the whole day, I guess. Well, like, because like she yells at him for stuff that doesn't even, that's like innocuous, that doesn't even yeah. matter. But she like seems to let him give him a pass on this for some reason. Yeah, not as like earth shatteringly yeah. bad. Yeah. And so she barges into his bedroom and Lewis is in the mirror drawing fake hair on his chest with a non-toxic <laughs> Crayola marker. Is this just like a detention kid thing? Like a, you just draw on yourself with non-toxic Crayola marker? That's like, kind of like, people used to do that a lot, like draw on themselves. Yeah, but I'm, but, but I'm just saying like in this episode specifically, like I noticed how they specifically made Chloe say, it's not toxic. And then Lewis yeah, says, yeah, yeah. don't worry, it's non-toxic. That is weird. It's like, that's just a Disney Channel thing. We have, they have to make sure we know that the marker they are using is non-toxic. They have to, they have to snap in their helmets when they ride motorized scooters <laughs> and tell, them, yeah. tell the kids that it's non-toxic. <laughs> Those are the stipulations. So she walks in on him drawing the fake hair. And this was on a few promos back in the day. Yes, definitely. Lewis, you are ruining my... Oh, oh. What are you doing? Oh, um, I just wanted to see how it would look. Don't worry, it's um, it's non-toxic. Which is a good moment. I, like I kind of yeah. like that moment. I mean, come on, like that would be something Louis Stevens yeah. is doing. Like he's home early, Ren's still at detention, so he's just like, eh, I'm just gonna use this non-toxic marker yeah. and uh, draw some hair on my chest and armpits, by the way. Uh, yeah, that was the best part. Was the armpit one because you don't see it. Yeah. you don't notice it until he puts his shirt on. Yep, and you can see that there's like black mush and writing yeah. all on his armpit. Yeah, he's like, I don't have any homework to do, so I guess I'll just draw chest hair on myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Lewis Stevens and his thought process. That's um, so funny. Lewis basically tells Ren that she didn't break the code by telling Tugnut that they were racing hamsters in detention. So since she didn't tell, she's cool. He does the little chest pound peace sign thing to her. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'll help you then. I'll help you get your, your thing done. It's Friday afternoon, the school is closed, and I'm never going to finish my display case by Monday. Right. So, uh, so let me help you. Okay, the school is locked, so how could you possibly help me? Well, it's really easy, actually. We sneak in, you finish your business with the project, and we sneak out, and nobody's the wiser. And then her phone rings, and she's like, I gotta go get that, but whatever. And then again, draw yourself a little non-toxic brain. <laughs> like Disney Channel, just yeah, have to keep throwing in the fact everything's non-toxic. Make sure it's non-toxic. <laughs> That's a good line, though, too. I like it. Ren goes to pick up her personal home phone in yeah. her bedroom, and it's Principal Wexler calling from a hot tub. Lord knows where, because he had to take a plane and everything yeah. to get there. It's kind of weird. Hello? Hello, Ren! Oh, hi, Principal Wexler. This is so great. I, I wanted to talk to you about something. Uh, Ren, you'll have to speak up. Uh, my fellow principals and I are discussing some very important uh, educational issues. It's, it's about the project. You see, um, I got detention today, and um, I, I didn't have time to finish it. You finished? Ah, oh, great. That's a load off my mind. No, no, sir. You see, I, I wasn't able uh, to. Ren, because... I can't hear you. Uh, too much educational stuff going on. But I want you to know that, that I'm very proud of you, and I know that Mrs. Bushwick will be very impressed. Yeah, Wexler's at, like, some hip-hop happening party. And he has an orange. I th- is this the same phone that was Twitty's phone? Or the phone? No, this is the same phone Lewis was using Wait. in Easy Way. Oh, really? I think it might be. Yeah, Lewis has that orange. So it's probably the same one then. I'm sure it's the same prop. Because that's the first thing I thought of. 
was the phone Lewis uses in easy way. My thing is, why does he call Rent? He never like, is he just calling to check on her? Because he doesn't really say why he calls. That's weird as well. <laughs> because he just says, Ren. And then she says, oh, Mr. Wex, Principal Wexler, like I have, I got detention, whatever. Yeah, it's really weird. Because why would he call her if he can't hear her in the first place? Because mm-hmm. he calls her, but he can't hear anything she's saying because it's too loud. It's weird. Because yeah. think about it. Yeah, she picks up the phone. She's like, hello, Ren. Ren, Ren <laughs> That's I can't it. That's hear all you. he says. Ren, I can't hear you. It's like, then why'd you call me? You <laughs> can't hear anything I'm but saying. But the fact that he seemingly had no reason for calling. He just picks up the phone and says, Ren. I'm just thinking about you. It, that's weird. It's so weird. <laughs> it's just it's so weird. Very, very weird. He hears everything incorrectly. He hears that Ren finished the display and that it's a load off of his mind. And then he ends up dropping the phone in the hot tub. And he doesn't care. No. Because he finds one of those little mixers and starts playing with it in he the water. He finds an egg beater. Like, there's a handheld egg beater yeah. inside the hot tub for some reason. I love that, though. Yeah. He's so cute. He takes it and he's just like, hee, 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 starts playing with he's it. He's like a little kid. Making bubbles. It makes him forget about his that his phone is destroyed. Yep. And so now Ren knows that she needs to get into the school to finish it. And mm. Lewis shows up at her door, fully dressed, ready to go already. He knew that. She would need him. Oh, he knew. And so he's just ready to go. But yeah, in my notes, I wrote, we are now officially over halfway through the episode and it's only just kind of picking up now. And at this moment, my mom thought it was about to be over. (laughs) I thought it slowed down after this. Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, I really liked like when they sneak into the school because it's fun. Mm. But now I like the beginning part better, like the... I like the setup better now. So basically, they break into the school at night with some extra not really help from Chloe. She just shows up for quote unquote backup. So everything should be easy, but Coach Tugnut is roller skating around the empty school like the strange man he is. Yeah, it's the middle of the night and he's apparently the security guard now. I know. Like apparently, apparently, I guess Wexler does this too. Are we so too This is ridiculous. He's on the phone to his wife and or something, right? This is where he says his full name. He says Terry mm-hmm. Tugnut is in charge or whatever. I like to think that Tugnut assumes that the principal's role includes the night security guard. Like I like to think that he <laughs> assumes that that's what Wexler does. Principals don't sleep. They're just yeah. at school roller skating around yeah. all the time. Yeah, and so they know that they have to get rid of Tugnut somehow if they're going to work on the thing. They could have just asked him. Ask Tugnut? Yeah. That's a good point. They could have. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've seen that Tugnut has been irrational this whole episode, so maybe, yeah. or unreasonable, I guess, he probably would have said no. It's just interesting to think that maybe if they had gone there earlier. Yeah. Like, hey, can I just finish this? It, especially since it's for the 75th anniversary. Like, hey, I got to get, we have to get this display done by Monday. Or they could have gone like the next day during the day. That's yeah. what I said in my review. I said, oh my God, if it was Friday, why didn't they just go on Saturday or Sunday? Yeah, because Tugnut's not going to be there all weekend, I, I'm assuming. And she had already said that it's only going to take her a few hours to do it. So it's like, just go Saturday or Sunday yeah. during the day. And she even says later it would only take her in one hour when she actually starts to do it. Mm-hmm. See, so many things aren't adding up for me right now as I'm like talking yeah. about this more. I mean, it is obviously like for kids and stuff, but like yeah, we love we love picking apart these things too. So, but I mean, some episodes are good and like oh, no, most of them don't are, have problems. Yeah, like most this. of them don't have problems like that. It's a weekly written episode. Yeah, but yeah, so they know that they got to get rid of Tugnut, I guess, because this whole episode is just Tugnut. We got to run from Tugnut. Uh, you know, so Lewis just happens to have some jumbo sized crinkle fries in his jacket, which, you know, okay. Like every like things just happen in this episode to happen, you know, for the sake of just happening. Like how long have they been in his jacket for? And they probably don't smell. Any- yeah. And I noticed like there was a continuity thing too. Like when he pulls it out of his jacket, you can't see into the tub. Oh, yeah, yeah. There aren't enough fries. But then in the next scene where they're like putting it up to the fan, it's like fries overflowing, overflowing on the top. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That's funny. At this point, he mentions, like, they're trying to figure out how to distract Tugnut, and he pulls out the jumbo size crinkle fries, and he's like, What would any out of shape 35 year old gym teacher want more than anything else in the world? I don't know, self esteem? Jumbo size crinkly fries. 35 year old gym teacher. No way he's 35. 
Did you look up his actual age? He was 36. No way. Jim Wise was 36. That's yeah. insane. I'm not 35 or 36. I'm 30, but... Yeah, I mean, it's only five years five away. Years like, now. are you going to be Coach Tugnut five years from now? And then again, like, they're saying 35 as in that's, like, that's old. Yeah, I think it's the juxtaposition of 35 and balding and overweight. Anyway, but yeah, that's kind of good, though. I don't know, self-esteem. <laughs> but yeah. again, like, just because you're out of shape in 35, you want self-esteem. That's true. Like, there's tons of out-of-shape people who have tons of self-esteem. I'm out of shape. Because, like, yeah. out of shape doesn't mean... It just means you, like, get winded easily. Maybe. Yeah, like, yeah. like, you don't work out. Like, I am incredibly out yeah. of shape, you know? That's true. It's just weird. Huh. And that's also true that, like, the gym teacher is out of is shape. Is out of shape, but, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the joke, but... So, Lewis says that, you know, an out of shape 35-year-old gym teacher would want jumbo-sized crinkle fries more than anything else. I think that's more of a specific Coach Tugnet thing. Because apparently, in yeah. this episode, Coach Tugnut is a jumbo-sized crinkle fry addict. Literally, like, he knows the number by heart. I think he has the one-speed dial. Yeah, he just dialed two numbers and it was there. <laughs> he did. He, well, they made this sound like it was seven, but he literally just went doot-doot and he, like, started calling his phone. No, yeah, he's a literal addict. So, they take this jumbo-sized crinkle fries thing and they take out this big industrial fan and they put the fries in front of the fan because, you know, that's going to send the smell all the way down the hallway to find Coach Tugnut and we get an animated smell thing following (laughs) Coach Tugnut. I remember this whole sequence lasting much longer when I was a kid for some reason. No, it still felt kind of long to me. Again, yeah. it's all silent. It's all silent right now. Yeah. There's just like little quirky noises and music playing and I'm like, oh. There's a lot of wasted space, like you said. And like Coach Tugnut's like, they, they have his wheels squeaking. Yeah. Like, like um, I'm like, why? Like a psycho thing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and so he sees the jumbo size crinkle fries thing that they left and it's empty now, so... Did they just scarf down all the fries? I would have. Anyway, so the thing's empty. And I think it's crazy. It's like really gross how when he's skating around trying to find it, he's like... <laughs> yeah, he's, he's going to like pass out. <laughs> he's like re- he's like doing that sniffing, like trying yeah. to find it. He's going to get lightheaded and pass out. Oh my God. Anyway, so he finds the empty container. He pulls up the empty container, like sniffs it like an addict. And then he calls the place on speed dial and says, I got it bad this time. He leaves his duty of roller skating around the school to go get the fries, but not before turning on heat sensitive, light sensitive and motion sensitive lasers. And so these lasers turn on right in front of Ren's display case what is the point of this? I was like, what junior high has things that are so important? They need heat sensitive, and light sensitive lasers. Why are they only in front of the display case? That's what I'm saying too. And then I thought, I was like, well, maybe like the stuff she has under there is valuable. Yeah. I mean, it's like 75 years of history. No like, one's going to steal that stuff. That's what I was saying too. But that was like the only thing I could think of. Yeah. And I was like, it just, this is, this is like one of those things. It's just like a random plot device thing that was just yeah. like, thrown in here for no reason. He gives us a, a, a nice scene, I think. I like this part. Yeah, but I mean, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, but... <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, the laser, it, it, like, it just felt like it was just killing time. It was just like, let's just throw in some wacky thing. It was definitely contrived, like... That's, I think, this whole thing, like, it's just plot device, like, the fan, and, like, it's just so forced... Which happens next. So the lasers are there and the way to shut them off, like the switch to shut them off are on the other side of this whole maze of lasers. So Lewis says that he's wispy and takes off his jacket and Ren's like, is that my old ballet outfit? Like, or whatever. And he's wearing like a leotard thing underneath and is, you know, zigzagging his way through the... Uh, lasers, and he definitely touches more than one, but... They, like, cut away conveniently. No, but, like, even with the full body shots of him going through, you can clearly see him, like... Yeah, he touches, like, a couple. They added the lasers in, like, obviously they're CGI'd, but... Yeah, which is kind of funny. I'd like to see that scene without the lasers. (laughs) Yeah. Just him dancing through the hall. 
But yeah, so that happens. And then Lewis turns off the lasers. Everything's great. Ren's like, all right, let's go do this. Like, um, mm. like get me the box that says this year. And, you know, because she had everything chronologically organized. And she's like, let's do it. We can do it. Lewis was just, you know, with all these hot lasers. So he wants to cool off. So he goes over to the fan and turns the fan on and stands right in front of it. But he has his jacket on now again. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Like he stripped. That's true. And now he has his jacket back on. And I was like, if you were trying to cool off, why would you put your jacket back on and stand in front of the yeah, fan? Makes sense. So that must have been like a weird continuity. I think I'm saying like a lot of the directorial decisions are kind of poor. Too. Well, because think about that. If they knew he was trying to cool off, like he, we watched him strip. He like took off his coat. He took off his pants, like whatever. And now in the next scene where he's trying, like not even in the next scene, it's supposed to be like seconds later within. Yeah. Like he walked from the switch to the fan and from the time he walked from the switch to the fan his coat is back you on. should put that in on tv.com yeah so he's like oh i'm just cooling off ren and chloe like all their stuff is blowing everywhere and oh she's like lewis will you turn it off and he's like oh yeah 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 cranks it higher so now all of ren's materials are blowing all over the place and what does lewis do he just stands in front of the fan that's awesome just just trying to what <laughs> block it I like and that. while everything's flying in my whole head i'm just just turn the freaking fan around if you that's can't find the off you. switch just turn it around something that's just stupid and trying to like kill yeah. time this whole episode is just feels very like the last half just feels very like haphazard like mm-hmm. thrown together the stakes are confusing like why what is this presentation for why is it so important she was willing to tell wexler that she couldn't do it because she got detention so just yeah don't i don't know and like i'm like i'm sure if wexler did hear her he would have just said like oh yeah no problem ren just go do it over the weekend yeah, or get there early on monday or like yeah and like granted her permission to do it yeah, at, yeah. at like whatever time like and she's vice principal ren stevens anyway like she yeah. should be able to do this anytime she wants i'll call tugnut and like have him tell you to let you in or whatever yeah exactly there's so yeah there's this this episode has a lot of holes like that probably more than like any episode yeah it's ridiculous anyway Anyway. but but do you know what what lewis says after the fan thing what he says my bad he does yeah oh my god remember because don't don't ever ever say say my bad bad. if you're my friend don't ever say my bad tom is so good in that one that's funny well, Lewis going back on his own word there. Yeah. Um, anyway, but yeah, my notes, I just said the fan thing was so stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, and so after that, uh, you know, everything's a mess. And Rent's just like, oh, my God, I let the whole school down. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody in school cares. You know, and then Chloe decides, she's like, Ren, you know, just forget about being perfect with this. Like, let's just slap something together. Let's make something different and fun, which I totally agree. Uh, yeah. The the end result, I'm guaranteeing you, was better than anything Ren was going to do. Yes. Um, <laughs> it was It was super fun, funky out there. Just everything was, it was fun. It ended up turning out like a super collage sort of idea. Yeah, like an eclectic kind of look. Like blending all of the years together. Like I bet Renz would have been like, here was this year, here was this year, here was this year. Like, you know what so I mean? So boring, yeah. And I, she had yeah. so much, so many boxes. Like well, how much did she think was going to fit in that? I know. Well, they do fit a lot in there. Yeah. And they, and they do stuff on the wall around it as That's well. That's true too. Yeah, they do. Anyway, but yeah, it's like way better. It's just like an explosion of 75 years. Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah. that's cool. And so they finish it up, but they can smell fries, so they know Tugnut's on his way back. And so they run and they hide. And then this, I noticed this too, Ren runs away in the direction Tugnut is coming. Oh, I didn't notice that. So it's like the camera is yeah. just still. So like Ren runs like this way towards the camera and then Tugnut's coming that way Cause they, Yeah, because they kind of into scatter. the camera. Huh, that's funny. So I'm like, how did he not see them? Yeah. I'm telling you the direction. Steve Dubin. It's it it's ridiculous, yeah. Yeah, so Tugna, he shows back up and he notices the display is done. He's like, huh, that's weird. That was definitely empty when I left, but okay. But he has his fries, so he just goes to stand there and take a bite of one of the fries. And Lewis decides to turn on the heat light sensitive lasers. I'm like, okay, first of all, you could have killed him. Oh, they're, oh, I didn't realize they were like that. I thought they were just like would trip an alarm. No. 
Yeah, because he says trip one of these and you'll have Johnny Law down here and whatever. No. I think they're hot. No way. That's why Lewis had to cool down. No, I thought it was just because he was dancing and like exerting energy. I always assumed they were hot lasers. That's what, because that's why I was always like, why doesn't Tugnut just trip it and let the police come and he'll be like, oh, I'm just on duty. Yeah, but that's why, because I think they're hot. Ah, man, it's a conflicting details there. I oh, because because they're making that sound. Yeah. And it just always sounded like they were hot, like like a yeah yeah like they're burning yeah. You're like, right. know what I mean? They turn on and it almost sounds like fire cracking. Like you know what I mean? It's like zzz, and they're like on. And in that case, what kind of person is Ren to want to risk her brother doing that just for some stupid presentation thing? <laughs> Get out of here. Yes, yeah. please risk your life and get burnt to a crisp so I can do the 75th <laughs> presentation for Mrs. Bushwick. Oh, I know. That's so stupid. It was like they, in the dialogue, they wrote them to be just a al- trip alarm, but like they but they constructed them to be an actual heat laser. Like the other reason why you can't touch them is because you'll get burned. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like I always assumed that's why Tugnut was like really not even moving his hand because... So they're, they're really intense at Lawrence Junior High. They don't That's want, what I say! They, that, they want you dead if you even try to take their 75-year-old <laughs> football. They don't want any part of that. They want you dead. My gosh. That is intense. Yeah, so that's why when Lewis like is looking at Tugnut and then turns on the lasers, if they're heat lasers, he didn't know how Tugnut was standing. They could have That's true. It could have just zapped him right there. He could have just killed Coach Tugnut and burned him to a crisp. It's so sloppy. It's a sloppy it, episode. It is. At least the last half. I I do like the I will admittedly say I actually really like the first half of this episode. It's sloppy in the last half though. Mm. But yeah, and so Tugnut was left straddling those lasers yeah. all weekend. Yeah. With the fries like almost into his mouth. That is torture. Yeah. There's no way he would have died. No, he would have died. Especially on rollerblades. Especially like if it was hot. If those were heated, he would have passed out. Anyway, so then the episode ends basically with Barbara Bushwick, who's a graduate Barbara of the very Bushwick. first uh, graduating Lawrence Junior High class. And she's just this little old lady who's like, oh, I love it. There's no borders, no boundaries. It's just 75 years of Lawrence Junior High. Oh, so beautiful. And that's it. And everyone just claps. And that's the big thing Ren needed to get done. Yeah, she's going to help Wexler's career. <laughs> so much. Barbara Bushwick. I mean, there are some other people standing around, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, there's a lot of... I mean, there's a, a decent amount confu- of people. It's confusing stakes. There's, like, these guys that look like the freaking Secret Service. Really? Oh, man. They're, like, in gray suits, and they're standing there like... They're, they're there to protect George Bushwick. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm, yeah, it's just weird. Yeah, just a few people standing around. And so, basically, that's how it ends. They pulled it off. Turns out Barbara Bushwick is a closet hamster gambler, and... Yep. Bets a few jelly beans, right? Oh, was that 13, 11 jelly beans? 11 jelly beans on Lucky Larry. Tell me why I remembered the name Lucky, Lucky Larry. Lucky Larry. That's funny, actually, Larry. So she does a little jelly bean deal with Lewis uh, with the hamster race thing on the down low. And that is pretty much it, it's, except for Tugnut telling them, like, I was straddling lasers. Anyway, but yeah, so that's basically the end, and like Tugnut suspects that they had something to do with it for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and then it just ends. And they laugh about it, by the way. Hilarious. I spent the whole weekend straddling possibly hot laser beams, Poss- and they're like, oh, ha 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 ha. Possibly hot laser beams. I wish he said that. By the way, also, she's like, oh, I couldn't, Ren's like, I couldn't have finished this without the help of my crew. And Wex was like, these two? And she says, yep, sometimes people can surprise you. As if like, that's supposed to be the moral of the story. That's what I'm saying. Like, I wish it was like more focused on that and like the detention and like her learning about these people. Instead, it's like just this like stupid story. Like, wh- why? What is she working <laughs> towards? You know? Yeah. I still like this episode. I'm just, you know, we got to be critical for the sake of this podcast. But like when she said that, I was like, wait, was that like? It felt like that was supposed to be. That's the moral of the episode, but we didn't really get that. Yeah. And that's like a weird ending line anyway. It's not a very strong ending line anyway. Yeah. 
It was a very weak theme. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. I mean, I think we said all of our general thoughts. Yeah, definitely. MVP. I put Tugnut. I put Chloe. Yeah. I really liked her actually. I thought she was really funny. She brought something to the vibe of the episode. I mean, even though like the story wise it was weak, I liked the chemistry with her and Lewis and Lewis was phenomenal, I think still in this episode, but, um, yeah. I don't know. I put tug nut. I just found myself laughing at a lot of the things he said. Oh, I got one of the, I don't know if you noticed this in the display case. Oh my God. No way. I've had this for a while now. It's, it's a wombat from Australia. His name's Fat Pat. He's been around forever. That's like the same exact one. It's the same one they use in the show. That is so cute. I love it. Oh, Yeah, for those of you, you know, you can't see. Yeah, you can't see um, it. I was going to say, for those of you who can't see, um, that's all of you. Um, <laughs> but for those of you who can see, Brittany. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ethan has that same, like, plushy kind of wombat doll that Ren puts in there and pats on the head. Yeah. say. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, I put Tugnut because I was laughing at the things he was doing. And, and he had the jumbo-sized crinkle fries, which was arguably maybe the most memorable memorable um, thing. Like, yeah, episode, memorable concept, yeah. Every time I watch this episode, though, I crave crink- like curly fries. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's time for some trivia. Is it true? Did you know? That- for your information, is it true that... What does that mean? Mrs. Bushwick, I didn't even write down the, the actress's name. I forgot to. But she was in a Boy Meets World episode huh. called Be True. It's a, I think it's a... F- oh, 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 oh. It's a... Boy Meets World Nection. We haven't had one in, in a, a while. Long time, unless, yeah. unless we've missed them. Not, well, yeah, possibly. But she passed away in 2011 at the age of 89. Mm-hmm. So had a really long career. I didn't write down like any other roles she had because there was like a bunch but, yeah. uh, and then another one is Muke, the kid in detention, Muke, who was like, mm-hmm. sick all the time. He was mm-hmm. in another episode. Really? I didn't realize it. Yeah, he's in the Sadie Hawkins episode, and he's listed as a guitar player. So it's probably huh. in like the band, like the Hootenanny yeah, band yeah, yeah. or whatever. So I'm going to have to mm-hmm. look for him now, Muke. And director is Steve Dubin, his only Even Stevens episode, but he worked on a special effects on iRobot and he was a camera operator on my favorite movie of all time, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Huh. And Eddie McDowd, he was on a few episodes there, too. Which Shia was on the pilot of Eddie McDowd, remember? That's true, too. I don't know if we talked about that on the record. We did. I'm pretty no, sure. we did, but I think that was like our test episode. Oh, it might have been. The writer, the co-writer with Dearborn, Todd Elias, and this is his only credit on IMDb. And it's funny because last week, the writer, Jessica Simpson... Mm-hmm. That was her only credit, too, was that episode. So it's kind of weird. That's funny. Two kind of weaker episodes as far as season one in a row. Because I think the last part of season one is really good. So I don't really have that much trivia. Um, Chloe, the actress who played Chloe, yeah. is Jennifer Freeman. And she was mm-hmm. on My Wife and Kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that, too. She was, like, the daughter on that show. That's where I always knew her from. So just oh, jotted that down. She was the daughter on that show. I didn't know that. I mean, mm-hmm. I, it makes sense now that you say it, but she looked kind of different. And then, so, pop culture stuff, I didn't really catch much. I don't think there was a lot in this one, um, except the laser thing was supposed to be, like, entrapment or whatever, the Catherine Zeta-Jones, uh, yeah. like, movie scene. Yeah. And, and also, that like, that laser thing's just been done a bunch of times, but there was a reference to teachers from 1984 with, like, the teacher dying behind the desk. Oh, snap, Yeah. I've never seen that movie, but I know the sequence, the scene. The yeah, shot, so yeah. I thought on TV.com it said that it might or like be week, an illusion Or like Weekend to at that. Bernie's, maybe? <laughs> yeah. <Or> like- <laughs> so, just move on real quick. Time for a few tweets. I was thinking that there would be new tweets about this episode, but there really weren't. Yeah, so. I mean, it's such a, like, whatever. I, I mean... There's so many more iconic episodes, this especially around this season. Mainly, all the tweets are about the fries, uh, which I'm not surprised about. Yeah, I figured, yeah. Young Beverage says, I will always love crinkle fries. Shout out to Even Stevens. Yep. This person tweeted, this is the same person tweeted about the fries almost a year apart from each other. These are, are these tweets. March 2017. 
They said, when I saw the crinkle cut fries and even Stevens, I almost lost it. I needed those fries. I'm still looking for them to this they day. Look, they sound really good for some reason. Yes, yes. They make it sound good. Yeah. And then on May 16th, 2018, the same person said, the best fries ever are most likely the crinkle cut fries from that Even Stevens <laughs> episode. <laughs> we'll never know, but they're most likely. <laughs> That's awesome. At Endoskeleton uh, says, remember Coach Tugnut from Even Stevens in that one episode where he madly craved crinkle fries? That's how I feel about Del Taco's fries. There was a tweet from 2012 um, there was like some children's TV station that was airing the show at this time. Mm-hmm. And they did like little tweet updates to tell people like what's on next. And they said, it's everyone's worst nightmare next as Lewis and Wren find themselves having to break into school to finish a project on Eva Stevens. I'm like, is that everyone's worst nightmare? Oh man, I hate breaking <laughs> into school. I hope I never have to do it. <laughs> I just thought that was kind of funny. They like purposely wrote into in all caps. They have to break into school. Crazy twist on the normal trope of breaking out, out of school. school. Another person, um, Lamont Coleman says, I'll never forget that episode of Even Stevens when they break into the school and have to go through all the lasers, LOL. Another person, Tay, says, me and Tree, were her friend, uh, were talking about food from TV shows one day, and we could really go for those fries from Even Stevens right about now. And then one more from Jeff. My favorite episode of Even Stevens was when they sneak into the school and distract Homeboy with the crinkle fries. <laughs> they distract Homeboy with the crinkle fries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, distract Homeboy. And his uh, handle is Hipster Boy. With an I, uh, yeah. B-O-I, I, Jeff. <laughs> I imagine that as soon as you said your boy. Oh, uh, yeah. And then just one little short one. Even Stevens taught me that crinkle fries are the best. They really are. Always reminds me of the Jack in the Box ones for some reason, every time. So, yeah, final segment, best quote. I really couldn't pick one. It was a, it I, was a tough one. I, it was very difficult. Yeah. So, I literally just had to scrub through the episode and just see are there any particular moments where anyone could be saying something i would think is worthy of my best quote well i I guess i kind of ended up picking three but just in case only because none of i don't really like any of them really i was just like i guess that's a quote Mm -hmm. i guess that's a quote um so i think the one i'm going with is after lewis messed everything up with the fan he says it's not that big of a deal i'll take the fan i'll walk down the hall I'll blow everything back the way it was, and we can all go to uh, eat dinner or what something. What a dumb idea. I cannot believe that you honestly I think tried that to offer work. my help. You do right. you you it. It. Then Ren's like, what a dumb idea. Like, she says that so genuinely. That's what makes Christy so good is she legitimately sounds irritated at Lewis all the time. That's what she's <laughs> like. She, like, I, I'm trying to, I tr- when I watch this episode, I tried to picture like a modern like Nickelodeon or Disney Channel actress no. reacting as genuine as Christy, and I just can't do it. Like, I just no. don't think anyone can do it as convincingly. She just kills no. it, yeah. I picked one that I used the most in my life because I was okay. like, there wasn't really another one that stood out that hard. So I picked when he's walking into detention when Lewis is, and he just says, my people. That's it? That's it. Okay. I've said that a thousands of times. Oh, yeah. Like, just... Yeah. Anywhere, like when I walk into work, I say it pretty much every mm-hmm. day. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I just like that one. So that is it uh, with the release of Disney Plus. I feel like we're going to be having a lot more to talk about. Yeah. It's being it's really interesting right now to see the show's uh, shift in popularity. I think it's really interesting right now to just see what happens now that the show is available. Just see how the response continues to go. Yeah, we're just going to see what happens, see Mm -hmm. what other people maybe discover our content now. Um, Who knows what could happen between now and the next time we record. So Tell your friends. Yes, watch Even Stevens on Disney+. Plus. You can all watch along with us. Yeah, you don't have to to message us anymore asking us where... To watch even Stevens. That's really exciting right now. Mm-hmm. And I think that's about it. Follow us on all the socials, of course. Everything will be in the description, evenstevensrank.com. Send us an email, evenstevensranked at gmail.com. And yeah, all the all the all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. So we'll see you guys in the next episode. See ya. <laughs>